Hello, I would like to speak today about uh, ways to refine and develop abo staccato technique. It is unlike other techniques that we have on the violin, most of them we try to strive uh, in equilibrium through relaxing and uh, using the right place on the bow. We try to reach a place in other techniques such as, for example, a vibrato, spiccato, string crossing. We try to reach a point where we can do it basically forever or as long as we need. And Abo Staccato is different because in Abo Staccato we use um, muscle spasm, we don't relax, we actually um, flex um, certain muscles in our body and we go through um, the bow like from the tip to the end or parts of it um, and we change strings so we are changing the balance of the bow so we're in constant change we can't do it forever we can only do it for a short time and we need to control it the bow is most of the time um, in the air or moving very fast and in one direction so it's hard for us to balance ourselves so this is a very difficult technique to internalize which brings many people to the um, I think false realization that you are either born with this technique in which case you can play Zigona Weizen or Rodo Capuccioso or Paganini Concerto and Caprices or um, you're not born with it and so you should not play these pieces or you should fake it. And I think that with the right attitude and with the right patience and knowing what, how to reach this um, with exercise you could develop a very good double staccato and amaze your friends and colleagues. So, first of all, let's speak about the two different um, staccatos. And the lying staccato is um, a technique which the bow does not leave the string. And our, the hand is doing a motion which is in, into the bow. While the flying staccato starts um, mostly in the middle of the bow, a bit, a bit above it, and flies off the string. The movement is with the third finger going inwards. So the tip or the bow is going this way. So a lying staccato, the stick is going into the bow, and the flying staccato it goes out of the bow. And the point of balance is very, very important. Always know where you're going to start or plan where you're going to start um, the staccato. But we'll, go, we'll come to this um, um, to talk about this issue uh, a bit later on. So the first exercise I call the double tap. Now, some people um, advocate using, in the beginning, big movements. And they make exercise like this. But I'm, in my experience, it just doesn't work. It's a completely different movement. It's too big to make such a movement and then try to do it quicker or uh, minimize it. I think it's better to start with an um, exercise that I call the double tap, in which you play. You can leave it on the string until you find it's starting to a little scratch, and then you can go from the middle and change the technique. Both of the up and lying and flying staccato techniques can be worked individually or eventually you need to be able to know when to change the balance. Um, I use most of the hair on the upper staccato, I don't know if you can see it, but I use most of the hair on the, on the lying staccato. But when I want to fly, I turn and there is much more it's much less hair a much uh, smaller angle between the bow, between the bow and the string so the double tap is a very good way to learn basically um, the fundamentals of this technique and you can do it on one string and change you can do it on the scale and of course you can do it on the passage that you want to play but it's very important that if you fail somewhere across if you if you 
you know, you feel very good here, and suddenly, suddenly, it doesn't really work. Don't go back to the beginning and try to force your, your way through it, but really study what happens in that particular space in the bow. You know, don't be afraid to fail if you can learn exactly what is going on in that place. Learn your bow, basically. Learn the stick, and since every bow is different, then it's very important that you learn your own individual bow. Of course, some bows are easier to jump than others, but basically with the right kind of technique, it really doesn't matter. Just study your own bow and, and, and figure out um, where exactly the weak spot is and try to avoid it or try to go across it or try to start below it or above it. And um, basically, I call it to being a violinistically smart about it. So now, we, so we talked about uh, flying staccato and flying staccato, the double tap. When you are feeling comfortable, you can go to a triple tap. Now, something about that I should have maybe said in the beginning but is that um, what moves the bow across the string is your arm. It's a misconception that the actual movement that you're doing is pushing or pulling um, uh, the bow. You don't. I don't think you should. You have enough um, time to to actually do it, and and your palm is busy. You know, doing shaking up and down or down and up. So what I do is basically I move the bow across, and basically my my fingers and my uh, the, the palm of my hand is doing the staccato, but I don't use the movement itself to to move. That will never work. So it's really the arm movement that moves, uh, moves you across and what happens in the palm of your hand that we need to figure out um, with feeling. Like do you bite it inwards or you bite it outwards and you balance it. So this is the first exercise, the double, triple and perhaps quadruple tap that you can do and you can do it on one note, scales, arpeggios, and uh, of course the passage that you want to play. The second exercise is, is, balancing, is the balancing point of your bow and bouncing on it as long as you can, reaching actually an equilibrium in which you can um, ba um, bounce on the easy spot on the bow as long as you can and it's basically less about learning the the movement because we are using a slightly different movement that we're going to use in Napo Staccato in real time but it is about finding a balance where you're comfortable um, this golden zone which you know we want to stay there as long as we can so finding the balance point and basically using a little bit of a circular motion you can try to figure out here this is a bit too knocky too much knocking that's a bit too heavy so I go back to where it is and then just try to and my elbow is quite high I don't I don't keep the elbow down it's very important to keep the elbow to have enough space between uh, the bottom part of your arm to your body and away from the string so you have a place to bounce. When it's too low, then you can still do it, but it's not gonna. I don't think it's gonna sound as nice, and you'll have le much less control. Uh, so the way I do it is keep my elbow high. This is how it's worked for me. Now I've seen other people who can do it with the elbow down, and you know that's that's good for them. <laughs> but this my, my staccato works with with an elbow which is a bit higher than than I would normally play as a share. So again the same thing about finding uh, the balance point is to play on each note, individual note that you want. Uh, and each time you find that the string, you know, a lower string will be dif a different place on the, on, the, on the bow than an upper string. You might want to change the places according to the sound that you want. Uh, when you have short bursts of apo staccato, um, you want you want to reach 
that place as um, the, the, the good balance point place as fast as you can and stay there as long as you can. So if uh I basically went three times after five notes I'm already and then I slow down a little bit and it's done so finding the balance point is very important do it on scales or pages and the passages that uh, you want to play which leads us to the third exercise now it's crucial that you have retained very good control when you are changing strings. Many people have good apostacato, but they fail in passages, which usually involves um, going through one string to another and changing strings, and they do not retain the same balance between the arm and the stick and the string. They, they keep the elbow or they bring it too high, so learning how to change strings and still feel um, the staccato and still keep the staccato and feel it. When I say feel it, like you're feeling the stick on the on the string is crucial. So if I do a talk the scales, stop, prepare, stop, prepare. Exercise is um, dealing with this, and I and I do advocate um, if you have a passage, for example, if we take the the um, stop, prepare, I keep moving my arm, not so gently, quite quite a sharp movement. So I'm all the time feeling that I can control the bow. The last exercise, this is more of in, in, the, in the refined part, is uh, slowing down your, your uh, staccato. So reaching. Because many times you will need to finish it in a nice way. You can't just uh, shoot like a machine gun, uh, but just playing it and then elegantly going to the next uh, next bit that you have to play. So slowing slowing your staccato and learning how to slow the staccato is very important. Um, you can use a metronome um, and then go against it. So if you're going to think about a before. Last bit of advice that I have for you today is always know what speed you're going to use, what kind of staccato you're going to use, and then plan where you're going to start it on the bow. Um, many times when I see uh, people, students uh, fail passage and then sometimes manage to do it and then fail again and then manage to do it. So they don't have this kind of security that's going to work. It's usually involved with that they don't exactly plan where they're going to start the uh, apple staccato. So you know your passage, you know if it's going to be short or fast and um, or slow or long. And so you need to absolutely plan this ahead because this is one of the keys for your success. So I hope this video helped you develop your um, apple staccato further. And uh, maybe we'll see each other on the next videos. Bye-bye.